It's early in the morning. I just woke up. Give me a break. I didn't even close to just wake up. Now that I think about it. <coughs> Damn it. Cooked on my drink. Um, I woke up two hours ago. I made breakfast. <coughs> Damn it. Right, let's do weapon three this time. Let's do some of the weapons that I'm going to try to avoid later in the game. Oh, come on. I gotta wait till there's, uh, power-ups near the top of the screen. The thing about Cabal games is that they all just have sort of, like, cryptic systems. Yeah, stage one is, uh, very long, and the thing about the early stages is they have a mid-boss that seems like it would be at the time where a normal game would have the stage boss. And then you just go back and continue the stage. Zanak does that. Zanak is, uh, I think, an intentional troll with that shit. Like, there's so many bosses in the early stages. And it's like, are you kidding me? This isn't over yet? Uh, but in Spriggan, the thing that they do, which is really cool, is... Um, you, you do get that, like, weirdly long first stage, but after that mid-boss that comes in the middle of the first stage, the music changes, the background changes, the enemies change, and so really you're in stage two. It's just still called stage one at that point, which I think is cool. I, I mean, I think it's cool that they add the variety. I don't know why they still call it stage one. That, that to me, is just weird. So this laser is definitely a classic weird compile weapon. It's basically just a wide forward shot, but in a needlessly strange zigzagging pattern. It doesn't have any obvious benefit. I think it just shows off a little bit of programming uh, fun that they're having. These early ones feel very programmer driven, not super designed. I know what's wrong. Audio is still coming out of my computer speakers. That's why it feels wrong. Alright. I'm not gonna fix that until I die again. It's not coming out of my headset. Alright, yeah, it's, it's parts like that there, where, like, you're not doing, there's just nothing happening. It's not even that it's easy, and you're just wiping out popcorn. It's that there's literally nothing on screen. <laughs> Curly lasers, these are funny. But this one has horizontal shot gap, so I don't like it that much. And then this phase of it has, like, just really weird coverage. That's why I don't prefer to use this weapon. Switch to the S version for a second. This one is cool, the lock-on laser, or homing laser, but because of the projectile limit, where you can only have two of them on screen at a time, I think, you end up getting overwhelmed. So, it's not that practical to use. There are some bosses where it's useful, but, uh, generally speaking, not really what you want. But truth be told, weren't you complaining about Raiden having, uh, not Raiden, uh, Raiden 2 having first two stages really boring? Not quite compile easy though. <laughs> Raiden 2. Get out of this 
Get it off the bottom of the screen. That's what the bosses in this game kill me with. They all come to the bottom of the screen. Like, we need some safe area, you dick. Uh, I'm not gonna have time to cycle that. Or to turn it into a flashing to get the golden light. Now it's time to switch back to... I'm gonna stick with multiple. And let's switch back to one. Actually, let's use two for a while. And then once I have multiple fully powered up... Um... Nothing. Come on. Alright, I'll switch the shield. If I'm not going to be able to use the cycling power up because I need to use them for gold lives, then that is going to restrict a little bit. Um, how often I can switch weapons? The only thing I don't ever want to use is the homing sub weapon because it's just uh, a lot of visual clutter and it seems powerful, but I don't know how effective it really is because the missiles are comparatively slow. This is definitely my least favorite stage. Music is nice and peaceful sounding though. Are they ever going to give me another two? Come on. Need the golden knife. There's a two. Oh, I was using the wrong shot button. Okay, I gotta be careful about cycling those close to the top of the screen. Because they immediately turn around and start moving north. So, for now, the three-way shot with the shield should be more than enough. I'm out of speed too for some reason. This kind of kind of gets when this guy's gonna fire lasers. I'm pretty sure it's on a random timer. If you have the four type weapon, it will eat those lasers. Might be a reason to use that later in the game. Um, when I hit that tank boss in stage seven. <coughs> Mostly on lookout for gold lives. I'm almost maxed out on bombs, so I probably should use them against bosses just to get rid of them. You can only hold 16 bombs, and you build that number up pretty quickly. But the bombs themselves are not very useful. They're not good defense, because they cover a weird area, they're not instantaneous, and there's no invincibility. And 
they're not that good offense because they don't go through any type of uh, shield or defense that enemies have. So, they're kind of minimal. do with this guy is lead that little projectile off screen. <laughs> yeah, he has a type 2 weapon. He is down really fast. But yeah, that projectile accelerates towards you, and it moves really fast, and it's fairly good at changing directions, too. So if you don't quickly load it off screen, lead it off screen, it can be a pain. Alright, so here I think is where I'm going to change the weapon for. want to pick up this cycler, even though I know I'm supposed to be taking it as a gold bike. Well, maybe, yeah, I'll take it as a gold bike, never mind. Let's pick up the strat. Oh, don't just throw me weapons out of nowhere. This stage feels like this is where the game wakes up. Like, this is where it starts to be fun. weapon is just going to help cut down on the clutter of bullets everywhere, and I think maybe I will stick with the multiple for the time being. Not sure I'm going to be able to get that cycler because it's too close to the bottom of the screen to shoot, really. Yeah, see I can turtle up on the side of the screen here. Oh, if it re I forgot, if the, I think it only with the sub-weapon ones, if they reach the bottom of the screen, they automatically turn into a golden life. Or a flashing item. But yeah, the thing about the weapon type 4 is that you can turtle up in a way that you can't with the other weapons. Oh, that was a type 4. Whoops. Power down and it turns into total garbage. So I wonder actually if the spawning rate is based on keeping enemies on screen. while recovering. <laughs> Alright, cool. Still enjoying riding too, I'm glad to hear it. I do that sometimes still. I, I'll put you or whoever else is streaming this up on a second screen 
and uh, like kind of watch that while I play. Not necessarily when I play Shop usually, because I usually can't do both. But like if I'm watching a YouTube video or something, like a video about Doom, or if I'm doing some research on, uh, I've been doing a lot of research on Quake recently, or Quake 2 this time. So, here, luckily I've got the three-way spread, which controls the tide of, uh, spiders. The one difference with the weapon type 1 and 4 versus the other two weapon types is that you want to use the turbo shot with 1 and 4. You get much better point-blank damage. Uh, weapon 2 and 3... It either doesn't make a difference, or it's actively detrimental. So for this stage, weapon type 2 is pretty good. Oh. That 4 snuck up on me. And I shouldn't have avoided that M. I didn't realize that my shield had worn off. I can cycle... Uh, I can risk you to try to cycle this. Get out of here. Yeah, so, yeah, there we go. So the normal cycler, when that reaches the bottom of the screen, that also turns into a flashing item. So, same is true for either. Alright, that's convenient for. Get left a little defenseless, though, while the weapon transitions. And, great, the series comes out of nowhere. Alright. It's all about knowing how to use all the weapons so that if you fail at power up dodging, you can take the punishment. Try to convert this one. a little bit longer than it does in Superstar Soldier when you're trying to convert power-ups. Alright, here's the worst mini boss ever. Or the easiest mini boss ever. I shouldn't say stuff like that during runs. I always end up dying. When I call something easy. Now, play super defensive. Don't really need any offense for anything coming up. Oh, an F snuck in at me somewhere there. Okay, it's working pretty well actually. So risky because taking a hit with four the lower levels of it are so weak versus two in particular two and three are perfectly fine weapons at the first power level so when you take a hit it's not quite as punishing and you can see the balls the four balls can't hit ground objects and that's one of the big weaknesses of this weapon. But the blue circling projectiles that F adds to it, they can. Those are just normal shots. Get this guy, just gotta be careful not to get trapped. Something you'll notice is that the enemies don't scroll with the background. 
the background is really just a backdrop. Uh, ground enemies scroll with it, but projectiles and flying enemies do not. So there's a weird bullet wobble thing going on. <coughs> as people uh, call it. This is actually the first game I've played since I was introduced to that concept. Uh, apparently Raiden 4 is known for it, but I didn't know that, and I played it for years without ever noticing or it feeling weird. And I think that the difference there is that Raiden 4 is a 2.5D game, so all the backgrounds are 3D, and the idea of bullet scrolling with them doesn't even really make sense to start with. I mean, that, uh, like, there should be a progressive parallax effect. But here, it's pretty noticeable. Because there's just flat backdrops, especially with the bosses. That the bullets do not scroll when the screen moves. Got me. Alright, so I think I've got a lot of gold lives to stock now. Probably around five. Watch out for those pyramid tops, because they will hit you. Alright, so this is where having a lot of multi-bodies can pay off. And we're coming up on the melee. This is the tough part. Oops. First, we started with a pair. There they are. I'm trying to keep the multiples close to me so that I can use them defensively. When you're at a high speed, they're really spaced out and it doesn't work for trying to block shots. And only the green multiples can block. Bullets. Yeah, I'm not going to get that. Okay. Don't. Don't need to. Alright. That tactic worked. Using the slow speed. Oh, we're not done yet. Whoops. I thought I was through. Come on, come on! Right there. Alright, so... Okay. Alright, using the slow speed work there. I did take that one hit, unfortunately, right at the end. So good to just bulk in these bosses right in the face. Ah. Can't believe I backed into that. So guy, nice.
<laughs> All right, they took time. And for this vague pick, I really would like to have multiples. I really want the four. Alright. One multiple is gonna be a big help. Two would be even better, but that's what we can get. Oh, what the? Really? They're gonna bounce in like that? The patterns are all so weird, and as long as you're on top of the spawn points, you don't see them. It's an odd concept for stage. Very helpful. Hey, Peppercow, what's up? I just got by. Uh, I guess I'll take that. Right, try to cycle this one. Right, I forgot. Don't convert it at the top of the screen, otherwise it's really hard to pick up. I'm just gonna rush up there and try to get it and risk ramming something. Now we're at a nice, comfortable three way shot. Oh, where did that come from? No, not a homing missile. Oh, it's throwing off everything. Got my cool white shot now. They're all lined up. Alright, the hand. So, with one multiple, this is gonna be harder than it should be. Still shouldn't be too bad. Oh, I've got 15 bombs, so it's time to drop some. Here on this boss, using bombs. More about clearing out those projectiles, and of course the bomb only hits in front of you, so no good for getting them when they're coming from behind. Alright, not bad. I'm oh, playing on two players, so I have a checkpoint enabled. That's bold. Is there, um, in Ryan 2, does it adjust the balance of the weapons on two-player side the way that it does in the original Raiden? Where, like, red is good on P2 side and blue is better on P1 side, even though it's still not better enough that anyone ever uses it? No. Well, that's good, because that's a fucking weird system. 
For years, all I ever heard was just play on PC side, play on PC side, that's easier mode. And then I finally, like, started asking more questions about it, and someone told me that it's the weapon balance that's different, and that's what makes it easier. But, like, I don't even... There's no evidence for that, or the... Not to say that that's wrong, but it's just so funny, the way that, like, information gets passed along in the community. No one really knows exactly what they're talking about. Alright, so things start to get spicy here. Yeah, also only applies in Japan, really. Yeah, of course. Like... <laughs> so much detailed information that we have to keep track of. That we choose to keep track of. I've got about five gold lives left. Not a ton, because I've wasted two already, I think. I mean, I guess it is a ton, given that, like, I can remain lives. That's a lot. <laughs> Alright, so it's not all that I could have, I guess is what I mean. Alright, so the boss of this stage is going to be the tank, right? So, for him, I might want... Weapon type 4. I can't switch to it now. No, not full fire! Damn it, hate some of these items. That is such a terrible pickup. Can I lose all my options by doing that? Here we go, this is my checkpoint that I want to get stuck at. I really need to be worried about. Alright, 
That one being Missalonkey down. <coughs> no big deal. These bosses are actually pretty well balanced to fight without power-up. Uh, they almost seem more appropriate to fight without power-up. Like, the lasers on this guy are pretty tough to deal with. If you don't have any angled shot. But the missile part, like, that's a pretty repeatable, consistent strategy that I just did there. You lure them up, let them cross over, then back out and shoot them. You don't need a high power level to get through that. <coughs> this stage on the other hand, I don't think that's going to be so true. Question is how many golden lives left? Guessing three, maybe two or three. Get greedy, scout what I need, play defensive. We have plenty of chance to power up later. Close again. Yeah, the bubbles are great. I love this uh, stage. And the music is perfect for it, too. <laughs> this is so much better than the Gradius 3 bubble stage. Well, at least the SNES version. I don't really know the arcade version, but the SNES one is like maybe the most boring stage ever made. I don't know. It, I guess it's fun to do stuff, though. So these ones, yeah, they're just a more satisfying pop. And we're not even to the bubble babies yet. That's part. These are just strange. I guess it's just like a bubble stage. It's so such a late 80s, early 90s, like colorful, 
low palette graphics seem to have. Makes me think too much of like Castle of Illusion or something like that. eruptions go pretty crazy if you don't pick them out. Pretty incredible that it's going to slow down or anything though. That was like the first one I've seen in the entire stage. Some rather suggestive bubbles. Oh, it's not quite over yet. There's the garbage circles first. Just randomly out of nowhere. Everything else in the stage is bubbles. And then garbage circles. <coughs> That hitbox. Come on. That's cruel. I guess this reminds me of Life Force bosses, like the way that they follow you around the screen. Some of those guys in Life Force are a real pain to deal with. Watch out for bubbles coming from off screen here. I'm pretty sure that can happen. Oh, actually, it, it might not be off screen. It'll be off screen on the stream, but it's probably not off screen on the console. Uh, my video is actually over scanned just a little bit, but I can have a five times upscale. So it does cut off a tiny bit of the bottom and top of the screen. Should probably turn that off actually. Just looks really great. I really like the way I got the MedFen emulator set up. to die. I think we're about to enter the hard part, but not even in the hard part. <coughs> time I've ever, longest I've ever fought that guy. Yeah, this is, Area 9 is the final stage, 
and the psychic area one. It's a long one. A really bad time to lose all your weapon level. Maybe this guy only shoots lasers when he's moving up on the screen. That's how it works. Oh, that's just weird. Checkpoint, so I don't want to run out of lives here. There are gold lives here. Gotta get through two more bosses, I think, to get past this checkpoint. I know this guy is in the same checkpoint. I don't have any bombs to play with here. So I just need to be careful about the bottom of the screen. Uh, I don't even know if there's a power-up coming up. I feel like that last one I grabbed was the last for a while. Oh, there is, but it's all damn it. I think I should have kept the shield, that's probably dumb. Alright, so the tank again. It's gonna be easier to get multiple. If I beat this tank, that is the checkpoint, and that's the checkpoint of hell, if I recall correctly. Checkpoint of hell. Alright, I need to line up on the S. S in score. Not sure if it's immediately after the boss fight though. Yeah, it's not yet. But now, yeah, here it is. Alright, so I need to clear this shit. Can't get too close to the missile emitters.
Probably cross over on this guy. Never actually needed to do that before. Alright, uh, I haven't seen past that point yet, so here we go. Love to have a bomb right about now. Give me another M. This may be the final bar. But no bomb. Turn into lasers. The nasty trick. Those sickles, last time you see them in the area five, are actually shootable. Alright, what is this? Off screen, I like that. Oh, damn, so low. These bosses just love the bottom of the screen. I can hit that window with the bomb. Just look at the light on the bomb and you get like no warning when that window is going to open up. Two, two bullets just make such a difference. I right, hit it. Tell me that's it. Whoa! Did I just get 51 up? <laughs> I 
Alright, I think that's the game. I'm pretty sure it's just nine areas. Well, especially given that I just got 51 up, so I think that must have been the game clear bonus. Thanks, thanks for watching, Pepico. And, uh, CPS. I don't normally get to do a live clear. Uh, even if it continues again. Ah, uh, that's pretty fun, but I don't like Gary and I'm. <laughs> Music was, I'd say like half of it was really good and half of it was decent. The bio stage, area four, and, um, the bubble stage, Area 8, both have really good themes. It wasn't quite spriggin' good, but it was good. Alright, this, this might also be my most ever... Oh, he stepped out while I finished! Come on! It was a nerve-wracking... Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the GG. Uh, it was a... Nerve wracking final boss, though. That guy went on forever. Best friends in Sapporo. Sapporo. That's odd. Special thanks, Rice Grounds, Mizutan, and Healthy Toyama. I wonder what. I always wonder. It's so mysterious when they put stuff like that in credits. What does that mean? So, that's. Maybe the most clears I've ever done in a single week. Three? I don't know. There's probably some other time when I went on a tear of easy games. Just to get them knocked out. Like, I think I cleared Prehistoric Isle and Blazing Star and something in the same week. Went to Neo Geo games. On normal difficulty. Uh, but that was... Friggin' hard, super less normal, and blazing star this week. Or er, blazing laser. <laughs> blazing star. AKA Gunhead. And uh, I think next up I'm gonna play Gun Mac. Gonna get all these compiles knocked out. Alright, and you can't leave this screen. And I didn't write down my score, but it's on the screen.